Hey, it's Kat looking at data modeling with you today. So when we talk about data modeling, we are talking about creating our own objects. Some examples of objects that we've already worked with are string. We've also worked with a type of um, component, which is also a an object, which is a button. We've worked with text fields. And we've worked with arrays, just to give a few examples. When we use objects, typically we have our program. And from within our program, we can use those other objects. Those other objects have been created by someone else. And that person wrote a blueprint for what that object was. So a string has some attributes and it has some behaviors. And we don't necessarily know what all of those are, but we can still use them in our program. So somebody wrote the blueprint for what a string is and what it can do. We don't know all those details, but we can quite happily use it. Someone also created the blueprint for a button. And again, we don't know the details of that, but we can quite happily use it. So the string and the button are both objects. And they were created by someone that someone decided what attributes were associated with those objects and what behaviors were associated with those objects. And they wrote a piece of code that outlined the blueprint for those objects and how they worked. And we use them in our own programs. But what we're gonna look at now is how to create our own objects that are then reusable for our own pieces of code. So we are going to decide on a blueprint for a particular object that we're gonna use in a program. We're gonna start with something nice and easy and we're going to use or create a die object. And by die, I mean like dice. So just a little picture there. I've got a picture of a dice with um, two sides, sorry, two dots facing up. So when we think of what object we wanna create, we first of all have to think about what attributes are associated with that object. And then we also need to think about what behaviors or what things we want to be able to do with our die. Okay, so when I think about a die, um, usually it's got a certain number of sides. Now most die have six sides, but you can have um, dice with um, different numbers of sides. So the number of sides is an attribute. Also the value of the face, so the, the side of the die that is facing up, so it has a face value. Now in terms of um, what data types these are, the number of sides is a number and you can't have a portion of a side, so they've got to be whole numbers. So this is going to be an int. And every die that I've seen, uh, actually that's not entirely true, but the majority of die that I have seen have whole numbers on their faces. Uh, you can have colored die, so showing a different color, or you can have die that show different things or words or whatever, that's up to you, but we're just gonna go with a stock standard die that shows the numbers one through to six. So that is also an integer value. Now in terms of other attributes, um, you could put in the color of the die, um, but not a whole lot else. Like a die is fairly standard. It's got a number of sides and then it's got the value of the face that is showing. In terms of behaviors, let's think about what we can do with a die. Well, we can create it. So I'm just gonna put a little dash for that one because the creation of an object is a behavior that applies to every object. You have to create it in order to be able to use it. You can roll the die to get a new face value. Um, I think that's mostly about it. What I'll say at this point as well though is that when we write methods, or when we write an object, we typically write a number of methods for the controlling the behavior of the object. And some of those methods are usually to set values and other methods are used to retrieve values. B 
because basically we put all the information into that object and it's contained within that object and so we can't just refer to the number of sides from our actual program. If that's not making a whole lot of sense I'm going to give you a little pictorial representation of how the die object relates to our code. So I've got one piece of code which is our program and another piece of code which is our die object. Now let's say for example that our die object has six sides and the current face value is equal to four. That's contained within the die object. So in here, if we had a die, so we'll say die, cat's die, we would need to create it, but then to find out what the face value is, we would need to actually ask cat's die what its face value is. So everything for the die object is actually contained within the die object and our code just talks to it to get information, to give information and to get information. Now I can have Cat's die, I can have Fred's die, I can have Sally's die and what happens is each time I create a new one I give it new values so those dies, those dice, they all follow the same set of rules, but they are each their own version. So if you think of a car, there are many different types of car. They all follow the same set of rules, typically. They've got four wheels, they've got a steering wheel, they've got some sort of gears, whether they're automatic or manual. They have a color, uh, they take some kind of fuel, whether it is petrol or diesel or whatever. And those sets of rules apply to the majority of cars. So my car might be blue and it might be a manual, but my brother's car might be red and it might be a four wheel drive and it might be an automatic, which would be quite strange. But the idea is that the set of rules applies to all, but you can have multiple different instances with multiple different values, but they all follow the same set of guidelines from that blueprint. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Um, so what we're going to do now is actually go onto the computer and look at how we would program our die object and then how do we get it talking to our actual program. Okay, so looking in Eclipse, I've got I've just created a new project folder called Data Modeling and in there I've created a new class called um, also Data Modeling with a slight spelling so one's got an underscore the other one doesn't because uh, a project folder can't have the same name as a class. So just be aware of that. Um, so I've just created a dummy class file there ready to accept some information. Um, and this is going to be the my program bit. So I need to, in that same folder, I need to create a new class. And this is going to be my object. So I've got to give it the name that is the exact name of my object. Okay, so my object is called a die, so I've just put in die with a capital D. All objects are um, named with a capital letter. Uh, that's just a, just a convention, not actually a rule, I don't think. Now with this one, because it's not actually going to be an applet, we don't need to import anything and we don't need to extend anything. So it's just public class die. Now at the start we need to have the variables that are our attributes. Now we did have two attributes for a die. We said we were going to have the number of sides and the value of the face. Now these are both ints, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these as private. So they are integers that are restricted within this class. So you don't want to just be able to access the variables of the die directly from your other program you do actually want to hide that or contain it all within your blueprint. So we're going to say private int number of sides and we're also going to have private int face value. And you'll notice that I haven't given those values yet because with an object when we say die, cat's die, we've said that we're going to have an object. It is going to be, it's going to be called cat's die and its type is going to be die. But then 
what we've done with other objects, so for example I'll look at a button, so if I had button submit, I then have submit equals new button. And that equals new button, uh, that is the bit that calls the constructor method, and that is the thing that actually creates the object, so gives it values and essentially brings it to life. So what we need to do in here is we need to write our constructor method, the thing that actually creates that instance of our object. So it is public die. Okay, so it's not public void, it's not public class, it's not public int. It's just public and the exact same name as our class. Now this method can take parameters, um, but we are not going to give it parameters at the moment. So the idea of this constructor method is to give the attributes starting values. So I'll set my number of sides to 6, and I will set my face value to a random number that is between 1 and the maximum. So what we do here is equal to and we're going to need to cast our result to an int and then in the second set of brackets we have math.random times the number of sides so that specifies my maximum number and then we add one to make sure it is a positive number that's above zero. Okay, now that's fantastic and what I can do from my program is I can now say die, cats die, and then in its cats die equals new die. And that would have created a die object with six sides and a random face value. And I can run that program now. Um, so the reason that these two files can talk to each other is because they are in the same project folder. If they're not in the same project folder, then this will not work. Okay, must be in the same project folder. So I can run this program and I should not get any errors, but I'll also get no feedback because I don't have anything in paint. I also, if I look back at my die object, I have no way of getting the information of the number of sides or the face value to my other program. So what I need to do is use some of those methods that I mentioned in writing a method to retrieve a value or to set a value. So we'll write one to retrieve a value first. And if it's going to retrieve a value, so let's write one that will get the value of the face. Now the value of the face is an integer, so it's going to return an int. And we'll give it a name, so I'm going to say get face value. It doesn't need any information to be able to do its job because it has the information that it needs over here. All it's going to do is return face value. So that will look at what the value is contained in that variable and it will return it. Now from my program, to be able to access a method belonging to my die object, I first of all have to refer to the die object I created, which is cat's die, and then I use the dot to use the methods that belong to that object. So the method I wrote was get face value, and you'll see that it already pops up there. And it returned an int, so I need to have an integer ready to accept that, that value. So int value is equal to cat style get face value. And if I want to see what that is, I need to actually output the value. I'm just going to put a drawstring. Okay, so if I run that, I should get a random number between 1 and 6. And I got 5. If I run it again, I got 5 again. And this time I got 1. I'm starting to think there was something wrong there. So if you continue running it a bunch of times, you should get different numbers. Eventually, you should see all of the values 1 through to 6, but remember that it is random. Um, now that's fantastic. I've got a die. It started with a random number between 1 and 6, and I was able to get the value or find out what the value was. But let's say I'm playing a game and I actually want to roll the die so I get a new value. 
I'm going to have to write a new method that will then set a new value for face value. So what we do is this method is not going to return information, it's just going to change the value of a variable. So it's going to be public void and we'll give it a name that indicates what's happening. So we are rolling the die and we don't need to give it any extra information to be able to do its job, just like we don't need any information out of it. And all it's doing is basically exactly what we did there. So we'll just copy and paste it so it generates a new random number. Okay, so we've got our constructor method. Let's just put some comments in here to give a die initial values. A method to return the value of the face. And this method is to simulate the rolling of a die to generate a new random face value. Okay, so that's essentially what those methods are doing. Now if I want to roll the die and see that I get a new value every time, what I can do is say cat's die dot roll die. And then I can copy that from before. So I need to, I roll the die, but then I again need to get the face value and then I can output it to the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste that line multiple times. Sorry, those three lines. So I'm going to roll the die, get the face value, print out the face value. Roll the die, get the face value and print out the face value. Okay, so I'm just going to change my Y variable so they print down the screen. Now if you're thinking, oh yeah, we should see, you know, every possible value. So we should see a 1, we should see a 2, we should see a 3, we should see a 4, a 5 and a 6. That's not true. It's random. We don't know what we're going to get. But we should get, hopefully, not too many of the same numbers over and over. Okay. Now if I repaint the screen, we can see those numbers change. Okay, so the die is essentially rolling every time. That is the basics of creating an object. So when you create an object, you create the class with the name of the object. You create a constructor method that has the exact same name as the object. You put all the attributes in the top and you make them private, whatever. Inside the constructor, you give each of your attributes a starting value. Then you need methods that will get and set the values of those attributes manually. Now just to quickly uh, look at what we would do if we wanted to work with a different die, so let's say we had an eight-sided die, we could actually overload our constructor method. So remember that when we overload, we use a method of the same name but we have different parameters. So we could say um, we could say that when somebody creates a die, they're allowed to specify the number of sides. And then we set the number of sides to the number that they've given us. And then we're generating a random number between that number and one. Um, construct a method to give a die initial values with the given number of sides. So if I go back to my thing over here. I'm going to copy each of my lines except I'm going to have cats die too. And to force it to use that second constructor method I'm going to pass it a number of sides and let's just copy this. Oops. Copy it. Paste it. And we're going to call it value 2. This is a bit of mucking around, but anyway.
hopefully I don't miss any because then it will get really strange results. Okay, and I'm going to put those ones next to the other ones. Okay, fingers crossed. So when we look, this first die is getting random numbers between 1 and 6, and this second die is getting random numbers between 1 and 10. So our die is our blueprint, it tells us all the rules, it tells us the attributes and the behaviours and our program is what can then actually just talk to that object. Okay, so we can create multiple instances. Now cats die and cats die too are terrible names, make sure that you use more effective names when you are creating your own objects. So this has been a fairly easy um, object and what we'll do next time is have a look at an object that's a little bit more complex that requires a few more get and set methods. Okay, so maybe just try creating your own die object. What I'd maybe recommend is try thinking about what you could do for creating a car object. So what are the attributes associated with a car? What are some get and set methods that you could write for a car? And then try implementing it in your own little program. Okay, so try out a die with the example that I've given you. Try changing some of the settings and see how it all works. But then also try something a little bit more complex like a die, uh, like a car. And then, as I said, next time we will do another more complex object together. Okay, good luck with your object.